All right, what's up, guys? This is Alex from X Trades. Back to you with another weekly trade ideas list. Hope everybody had a wonderful Labor Day weekend. Got some resting, got to rest your brains. Now we're getting back into a shortened week in the stock market. Last week was pretty interesting. There's definitely a lot going on, a lot of data. The Jules Job openings data moved us very, very heavily last week. And then we also had non farm payrolls and also ISM data on Friday. So I'd say it's pretty volatile. And then the volume died down very, very rapidly. So the first hour moved the most and then the rest of the day was just choppy. That's probably just because people went on, you know, they went on their break and probably went on their little vacation for the weekend. So this week might be a little bit quiet. There's definitely not as much data as there was last week. We had way more going on last week and also it was just a full week. So this week, Tuesday, September 5th, this is our first trading day of the week. All we have is factory orders and I don't really expect this to move the market that much. So I really wouldn't expect too much from this. Wednesday, we can definitely see some movement from data. So we have the S&P final U.S. services PMI, also the U.S. trade deficit and ISM services. And then also the Fed beige book, but usually this doesn't really move the market too much. The beige book, just a little summary from all types of Federal Reserve banks. And they kind of just give an economic outlook, right? Pretty much how their economy is doing in their local area, depending where the Federal Reserve Bank is located. And then Thursday, September 7th, just our usual initial jobless claims. And then really it's just a bunch of Fed speakers. This U.S. productivity and unit labor costs, the revisions, I don't think this is going to move the market at all. Fed speakers can definitely move the market. It just depends on how hawkish or dovish they sound. Usually I really only care for Jerome Powell when it comes to Fed speakers. I also liked Fed Bullard, but he's not going to be here anymore. I think he took like a dean position at some college, some Ivy League school, and he's not going to be doing any more speeches for the Federal Reserve or really anything. So, so really when it comes to Fed speakers, it's kind of a wild card. Really any of these could you know, move the market. It just depends on how extreme your speeches are. And if really anything's hitting the news wire that's going to trigger algorithms or any other traders to take instant action and reflect it in the price, such as rate cuts, rate hikes, really anything that's against the norm and what the market is expecting. If any of them mention that, it can hit the news wire and that can, you know, make the algorithms bid up or down. You can see some volatility, but I really wouldn't expect too much from this. But there is a lot of them. Like you got one, two, three, four, five, six. So you got six different schedules here for Fed speakers. So really anything could happen on Thursday. This is kind of a wild card, but I personally wouldn't expect too much from it. Then Friday, September 8th, we do have wholesale inventories. We do have one Fed speaker and then consumer credit towards the end of the day. So very quiet week for data. I would just say that the PMI and ISM services could probably move the market the most really out of any of these and maybe the initial jobless claims especially with how we reacted to the jolts job openings a lot of people have been paying attention to changes in the labor market so if we could see any hint of more changes in the labor market initial jobless claims can definitely move more than expected it just depends on how extreme the reading is as i say every week so as for the economic data let's go ahead and check out the seasonality real quick so this is for the spx we're going into september 5th tomorrow and i went ahead and put it up to september 16th as you can see up here and the reason for that is because that's pretty much when we average a rally up until that point up until the 16th and then after the 16th it's pretty much just a straight shot down to hell as you see we average a very large dip doesn't mean it has to happen but i just want to show you that this little period from september 5th to the 16th it's relatively quiet and it does have a little up thrust with exception of this little dip right here that you see from what is it like the 7th to the 9th or so maybe the 10th it's like a little dip so i would expect the beginning of september up into half of september it'd probably be relatively quiet maybe it'll be smooth Hopefully not too much volatility and hopefully we'll somewhat follow this pattern. I wouldn't mind seeing some upside in the market before we see this large dip. And it looks like that's what we may get. You know, this is past 25 years worth of data all the way from 1998 to current. So we've been following the seasonality pretty good. It's not just going to follow it, you know, move by move to the exact, like we can definitely move more than, you know, 0.28%. This is just the average return of all the years combined for this period from September 5th to the 16th. So we definitely move more than that and we don't have to go up either, but I just want to show you from the beginning of September up into the half, it is relatively quiet and there is a little up thrust and there's really no volatility that we're averaging until the last half of the month. 
And then for Tuesday, this is the Almanac page. You can see day after Labor Day, Dow up 16 of last 28, but down last 9 of last 12. The Dow was up 16 of the last 28 years, but Dow was also down nine of the last 12 years. You see the probabilities for the Dow is actually pretty good. It's at a 76.2% chance of rising, S&P at 52.4% chance of rising, NASDAQ at 52.4, same thing. And then the rest of the week, you see like Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, all pretty neutral. Probabilities are in the 50s and 40s. So really nothing too much here. But Tuesday, the day after Labor Day, looks like, you know, it could probably be a pretty good mover, especially after people come back from vacation or they come back from their break. We can definitely see maybe a little bit more volume, a little bit more activity and participation than we saw on Friday. And it's also the beginning of the month. And you can see that beginning of the month rebalancing. People are, you know, trying to People are trying to get their entries and exits in for you know the rest of the month. You see that beginning of the month up thrust, a little bit of Wall Street window dressing, trying to make everything look good. And then towards the end of the month, as you saw in the seasonality, is when it kind of starts dying down. And maybe people are starting to take profits. People start hedging. VIX starts going up. People get a little bit more fear because they're expecting that weakness and seasonality towards the last half of the month. So it looks like this does just align with a pretty neutral, pretty neutral start of September, as this shows us right here. Really nothing too crazy. Probabilities aren't crazy. And I'm pretty sure this data on the almanac is for the last either 50 or maybe 100 years. But either way, it's, it's pretty good data. Really, it's just probabilities at the end of the day. So it's not a guarantee or anything. It's just kind of giving us odds of what the market could be and the odds of it rising. So that's for the economic calendar, for the seasonality, and also just a quick almanac page I want to show you. If you want to go get the almanac, you can go on Amazon, look up, maybe it might be 2023 stock almanac this year. Maybe it's 2024. The new edition should come out relatively soon, and it comes out every year. So if you want to go on Amazon, go check that out. You can buy one. It also has a bunch of other cool stuff in it. So you can even write in the little journal pages it provides you if you need a trading journal. There's other data, other charts, lots of stuff in the Almanac. But for the most part, it is just a big calendar with historical data, little quotes, all sorts of stuff. So it's good if you're an investor, a trader, kind of see what you're going up against seasonality wise. So let's go ahead and get into our individual setups. I only have three this week. We have one long that I'm looking at and also two potential shorts. I just want to be covered on both ends in case you know, market dips and maybe we don't have that smooth beginning of September. I do want some potential setups to the short side for puts just so you have that exposure in case the market does dip because September is historically weak and you can see that weakness starting to come honestly I mean the, the liquidity is not great the swings are more wild because the you know the bids and offers are more thin and it takes less to move the market so you see those wild whipsaw swings but first setup here we're looking at AMD you can see it's a test one test two finally starting to break out here it's a very brief breakout, so it's not too far broken out yet, which is what I like, because if it gets too far out, then you know you don't want to chase it. So this is just now starting to break out a little bit. If we zoom out also, you got to test one, test two, test three bounce. So this would have been a good trade off test three as well. But either way, it's looking pretty good for a potential bounce. I mean, it's been consolidating, kind of suppressed a little bit. It hasn't really moved the way that AMD usually moves. So you kind of assume it's in that consolidation period and a big move could be coming soon. So I'm hoping that this little signal on the breakout here could be good for upside. If we go to the four hour, you can see it, it's also broken out. It looks like there's a big imbalance candle right here. So you need to look out at the top of 111.64. If we can get over 111.64 and also just the 112 area, that could take you up to supply at about 116 or so. It's going to be at this area right here. And that's a one day supply zone, I believe. So this is a little, it's like a rally base drop supply zone. And it comes from this area right here. It's going to be at 116. So if we can get over 111.64, you could, lose, you could use 111.64 as a short-term price target. So it gives you about you know two dollars to the upside so far before you hit resistance. And then if it can get over that and close over that with a one-day bar, that could take you to 116. So AMD here, looking at calls, looks pretty good for this breakout. Really just needs to stay over 107.08 short-term. And that's this little support area right here. So that's the 107 area. As long as it stays over that, since it reclaimed it, and it was a pretty good support beforehand before it broke right here. Now that it's reclaimed it, we want to see it staying over that. So that's all we're doing, just using past price points as you know our current levels. And then overall, obviously, it just has to hold that 99.50s low. But you don't want to use this as a risk off unless you're 30 plus, maybe 60 days out. 
on expiration for calls because 9950 is a good little distance away. And if you're going at the money or slightly in the money for contracts, if it goes down to 9958, that's going to be you know pretty far out of the money at that point. So you want to use this 10708 as the short term risk off. Also, you could use this uptrend line right here. Just use your standard test one, test two, test three trend line right here. You want to see it holding that. You could also kind of assume if it went back within the downtrend line and started closing back within this, you could use that as a risk off as well. It's another way to look at it. So you just want to you know, view it in multiple ways. So we can view this 107 area as a short term risk off. We could use this downtrend line breakout area as a risk off. If it goes back within, you know, probably go invalid on the short term. And then overall, just needs to hold 99.58, obviously, and this overall uptrend line right here. So as long as it's holding this overall uptrend line, setup still looks good. But if you're, you know, short term trading, you want to just consider the 107 and the downtrend line. Just keep it simple. And then use 111.64 as your first area of resistance and your overall area of resistance or supply at 116. It can get up there if it can get over 111.64. So as for AMD, looking at calls. All right, next we're going into shop. So this has actually been on a tear, had a crazy gap up the other day, closed up 10%. So this may be just a tad bit overextended on the short term. Obviously, you know, it's hard to determine what is overbought and oversold. So all you can do is draw your resistance points, uh, use supply and demand, maybe look at an oscillator too as well. You can use the RSI, but you have to know how to use it correctly. And you can't really be upset if the RSI is wrong because the RSI is not the most reliable. So you can use it for overbought and oversold signals, but it's good to use other things as well. And right now we're looking at this supply right here. It's kind of like a drop base drop area. So you got a big drop base drop. You could also call it a little rally base drop as well. But either way, this is a base that led to very strong selling. And that's why I think this area could see a little bit of resistance. So I'm going to be looking at puts on this. Obviously, I want to see it taking out Friday's lows for a reversal signal. It's going to be at 65.89. I have a magnet on, so my lines that I draw just auto connect to the low and whatever point that I need it to take out. So if you're wondering how I'm getting these precisely drawn, that's how I just add the magnet and literally just hit it and your mouse will just auto connect to 65.89. And that's Friday's low. So you want to see it taking out the lows of Friday. If I can take out the lows of Friday, that's your signal. And it can start filling back down this area right here. And it probably try to hold up right where the gap starts, kind of like as a gap support. A lot of stocks will do that. They'll try to bounce there. And then, you know, maybe afterwards it can fill. But you really don't know if it's going to fill until you get that confirmation. That's usually going to be like an hourly, uh, like an hourly bar break under the low of the gap support. And get under that, start closing within it. Then the rest of the area can fill or at least halfway. Sometimes they'll stop like halfway, three quarters, just to mess with the people. So we're not really eyeing the gap fill entirely. I mean, overall, eventually I feel like this could fill because 80% of the time gaps are going to fill. I'm pretty sure that's an actual statistic. But right now we're just focused on this 6589. We want to see that breaking first and then we'll just eye the gap support for now. So what we could do, we can go ahead and hit add alert and we'll just name it breakdown Friday's low. So I already had it in there and that could be a nice little signal for puts. And you want to be able to wait, right? You want to be patient. You don't want to just jump and push just because it's at supply. So we're going to use this Friday's low as kind of the structure point that it needs to break under to start filling the rest of this daily bar down. And last week we had a Oxy as well. We were waiting for a signal and we never got it. So it's important that you set alerts and you wait for the signals so you don't get screwed. Because last week Oxy looked good for puts, right? It broke the trend line was that there was a lot of wicks, a lot of buy pressure wicks pushing up to the upside. So that made us skeptical. So we went ahead and set an alert at the lows of the wicks and we waited for that to break and they never broke. So we never got the signal for oxy puts and eventually energy caught a bid and it rallied. So you gotta be careful with that. Luckily we had FCX totally ripped off demand. It looked great and even cleared our supply target. And then we also had UPS, which had a really nice bounce for two days. I believe Monday and Tuesday, it just totally ripped maybe two or 3%. So the cause for FCX and UPS were great. The oxy puts did not trigger. And it's important that you wait for those triggers. And the reason why you want to draw these out and set the alerts is so that you don't get screwed and you're waiting for a signal. And it's important to wait for the signal sometimes. You know, you could try to call the exact top or try to enter right away. But sometimes if you're a little bit impatient, the market will, you know, humble you. So let's go ahead and wait for this 65.89 Friday's low to get taken out. 
and then we could look at puts on shop. If this never triggers, then so be it. But overall, it looks pretty good. Looks like the slow stochastic here, getting a tad bit overbought. I was looking at another chart as well. The RSI is also looking a little overbought. Not that the RSI or this oscillator means anything. The most important thing is, is that it's at this major supply where there was a huge sell imbalance from August, arguably probably due to this earnings right here. And maybe we could see a little short term repeat, but we want to wait for that 6589 to get taken out and then we can look at puts. So shop here, looking at puts, just be patient, wait for that signal, go ahead and draw a low at Friday's low if you're watching this on your trading view, right click, hit add alert and do the same exact thing and just wait. All right, next we're going into RCL. So this is another short setup. If you're familiar with bearish patterns, you probably already know what this is. It's a head and shoulders pattern. It's just not confirmed yet. It has to take out the neckline. So this is your first shoulder. This is your head and your second shoulder in this area right here. Another thing it has broke this little uptrend line. Obviously, if you want to trade this trend line, you need to enter after this first bar and it broke down into 97.30 to the support, which is also the neckline. So you got your neckline right here in 97s. You got it holding up right here, holding up right here. So you can assume that 97.30 is your neckline so what we're going to do you want to hit add alert at 97.30 and we'll name it neckline break so this is another put setup that you're waiting for a signal on shop you're waiting for friday's low to get taken out rcl you're waiting for 97.30 to get taken out which is your clear neckline as you see there's a bounce here there's a bounce here bounce here so there's about three or four bounces off this neckline so it's a clear area of support also a clear neckline you have one shoulder, another shoulder, and a head. Very clear head and shoulders pattern here, which is bearish. So we can look at puts on this if it breaks 97.30. Probably want to see like a one day bar starting to close under this. And then you can start looking for flushes. If you want to go to the shorter term time frames, use like a one hour bar. If it starts closing under 97.30, you can assume that the neckline is potentially breaking. Obviously, when it, you know, when it breaks, it can shoot right back up and reclaim it. But, you know, that's why you set stop losses and, you know, just don't expect too much from the market so you won't be disappointed because the market does have a randomness factor to it. I was explaining this last week. If you keep your expectations low, it'll feel that much better if your price target hits. And also you won't be disappointed if the market does something totally random. It goes against your analysis. So like I said, the market's not here to make you look stupid. It's not here to you know, do the opposite of what you're thinking, which sometimes it feels like it's like that, but it's really not. There's just a lot of computers and algorithmic trading I feel like they're just, you know, trying to take the opposite and take contrarian trades. And you'll see that reflected in the price action. Like it'll break support and then instantly you shoot back over it. And you're like, what the hell? Like you get instantly stopped out of your puts. It happens. But just set, set your stop losses. Use the one hour bars. Make sure your levels are breaking first. You know, just be as careful as possible. If you took all your precautions, you know, you did everything you could. Sometimes the market or the trade just doesn't work out. So 97.30. That's your area you want to set an alert. We just right click, hit add alert, name it, and we named it neckline. So that's your head and shoulders. Looking at RCL for puts, just make sure your neckline is breaking before you take puts. All right, now we're getting into the indexes. So last week, I was expecting a bounce in the market. The reason for that, we were still holding 43.85, which is the level we were looking at last week. We were also looking at this demand. It's the same thing we were looking at the week before. We we're looking for a bounce off this demand. As long as it got over 4385, we expected it to get all the way up here, up into supply. I expected the same thing this week. I just wasn't sure if it was going to get up there within a week. And it literally just did that plus more. So this is our price target at 4450. It totally cleared that within three days. So actually within two days. So it did this on Tuesday. Literally Monday was bullish. I was expecting this little red bar right here, this big sell and bounce candle to fill back up. I thought I'd just take us into supply and then we'd see a little bit of resistance. No, nope, not the case. Jill's job openings came out, made the market extremely bullish, and we just absolutely ripped through supply. And you can see once we got through the supply, the pretty, pretty straight shot up to one week supply, which I'll show you in the one week time frame in a second. But I just want to give my thoughts about last week. It obviously cleared all of our price targets. The analysis was correct. It definitely went up way faster than I thought. I thought it'd take a little bit, at least, you know, a week or two to start getting up into the supply, but it was way faster than I thought. And it's likely because of the sell and bounce candle. I mean, usually when you see a bar like this, it's going to fill back up relatively quickly, kind of like a gap. 
That's what I was explaining last week. These big sell imbalances are almost like gaps and they eventually fill back up. Market likes to fill back up these red candles to the upside and then also likes to fill up, you know, green candles like this pretty fast to the downside. And that's where supply and demand zones come in. Using red, red bearish base candles for demand, using, you know, bullish base candles as supply areas. As you see, it rejected out the supply on Thursday. And then we filled that back up. So that was for last week. This week, obviously, I feel like it's not as clear of a setup because we already moved, right? I'd already cleared my price targets. And not only that, we're now up into one week supply. So this is a big, big one week supply. This is our most recent 52 week highs. This is a big rally based drop zone. You can see initially we did have some resistance. You can see it in this wick and also just from these, you know, two daily bars right here, this area is starting to kind of reject just a little bit, which is not surprising after we had a, you know, almost a 2% rally just in these two candles. So from this area, I'm definitely not looking to buy calls. This is kind of like a no-no. I would need to wait for, you know, 4,600. Need to wait for that to break out. Then I could expect a little bit more highs. I feel like we might stall out a little bit at this area just because of the one week supply. I could also see a pullback from this area as well. I just don't think it's going to be this week because we have this big one week candle that closed up relatively bullish. I mean, it closed up, I think that's plus 2.5% on the week. So really great week, really great one week bar as well as we're back over our nine EMA. You see this green line and we're also over the 21. So this 921 combo has been holding all the way from, you know, April, March, just this area is when it started and we've been holding it ever since. And you can't really assume that a structure is completely broken until you see it under the 9 and 21 combo on whatever time frame you're looking at. The 9 and 21 is kind of your standard uptrend, downtrend measurement, depending if it's trending over it like this or if it's trending below it like these bars right here. You can assume it's in a downtrend. Once it gets back over, it's in an uptrend. So right now we're in an uptrend. And really anything that you're you know trying to bet against to the contrarian side, which is you know, looking for downside up here, you are betting against that uptrend. So that's where it gets a little bit tricky. But with this one week supply, if it can start getting maybe a little bit further inside of it, a little bit closer to the supply high, I feel good about, you know, trying to look for some downside or rejections. But with this one week bar and also this reclaim over the moving averages, you can see it's closing back over the nine EMA. You could see a little up thrust here up into supply before rejecting. So there's just no one week bar or really anything screaming that is just going to reject and fill this candle all the way back down as well as the VIX at 13.82. We would need some type of event for that to happen. And I showed you the economic calendar. We just don't have that this week. So I'm not really expecting much this week. It's pretty much the summary of what I'm saying here. I personally wouldn't try to trade calls inside this area. For swing trades, at least for day trades, it's fine as long as you're flat by the end of the day. If you you know you're still trying to buy the dip and you're still trying to trade breakouts up here, that's fine as long as you're flat by the end of the day. But you do want to be careful with swing trades in this area because this is not the best risk to reward. If you're looking to get swing trades or trade calls, you want to get it closer to the one week moving averages, get it closer to one day demand. Like I was saying the last two weeks and this week, I'm telling you, it just doesn't look as good. So last week I had you down here. Or I'm sorry, two weeks ago I had you down here. We were looking for a bounce. We got that. Hit the supply target last week. I was looking for the same exact thing. Just wanted to see the sell and balance candle fill back up. That already happened. So now just kind of putting my hands up. Probably not going to try to, you know, call anything too reckless here because we are at supply. And also at the same time, the one week bar is not that bearish. So I'm not going to say it's just going to reject super hard here. And I'm just not going to say that's going to rip super hard here. I feel like this could enter a little period of consolidation and this one this one week bar might not be that significant, to be honest. There's really not enough data or really anything, you know, to make it significant. You know, maybe maximum the probably get up to, you know, 45, 44, another 30 points. There's also a little gap right here. So if I didn't have the one week supply here, there's also this little gap right here. So maybe we could fill that as well. So you're looking at, you know, 45, 66 or so. And that's probably the max I could see it. You know, fill the gap, maybe reject about there. Uh, on your one day bars, you are trending over the 9 and 21 combo. You got your 9 EMA crossing back over your 21. So that's a good sign. Uh, it crossed down here back in early August. And that's when we kind of started to see that downside. And now we're getting right back over. You got your green crossing over the yellow. So that's that's a good sign. It's just not that great because we're at one week supply. So maybe expect this little gap to get filled. It just doesn't look 
as good this week as it did the last two weeks. I had a way more clear signals. So that's for SPX. Just be careful, you know, for swing trades and you know, for day trading, that's fine. Just be careful if it gets inside the supply. All right, next we're going into the QQQ. So I had the same, pretty much the same outlook as SPX last week. I was looking for a bounce in the NASDAQ. Kind of have some new drawings here. Let's get back to our previous ones. So we we're looking at this demand right here, drop base rally zone. And then we also had, was that 363.40s? So we're looking at this Friday close from last week. We closed over the 363.40s, which is pretty much what gave me confidence that we could bounce because we were holding demand and also closed over the 363.40 structure in this bar right here. And then you can see we filled this big sell and bounce candle pretty much right away. And the max I was looking for was just the 372.85s, you know, just the pretty much the sell and bounce candle high. And we cleared that plus more. So now on the one day, we are breaking out of this little downtrend. You got to test one, test two. There wasn't really a test three rejection. So this trend line is kind of iffy. I would rather have seen a rejection and then a breakout you want to see that three test rejection for trend lines or just you know a third test reaction in general for any trend line uptrend or downtrends three tests is what validates your trend and to validate this one with absolute certainty we would have wanted to see a test one rejection test two rejection test three rejection you can see it just broke straight out so you know take this trend line with a grain of salt so we are coming into this big base right here it's a supply zone we already filled this little gap right here so it looks like this could see a little bit of resistance definitely doesn't look that great to enter calls but at the same time we're trending over your 9 and 21 emas on the one day time frame you got your 9 crossing back over your 21 you know, maximum if it did pull back here from supply i could see it you know down to here and probably try to back test that area and hold up there and i don't really have a clear price target or really any direction you know going off this chart for this week the last two weeks much easier much more clear this week, not so much. You know, you do have kind of like a little shoulder here, right? You can make the first shoulder, you got a head, and then maybe, you know, it could make another shoulder and try to sweep up, take out the neckline and break out, but that's just speculation. That's just something that's, you know, potential. But the lowest I could see it, if it did pull back here off supply, 372.85, that's just your sell and balance candle high, which would also be a back test area, probably meet up with the 9 to 21 moving averages as well. So maybe we can see a pullback in the QQQ just very slightly with, you know, 372.85 maximum. And then upside, I feel like it's just limited here. It's mid range. I don't really have anything for you right here. So I personally wouldn't trade the QQQ or the SPY for swing trades yet. Wait for a better signal. And your better signal is going to be a rejection candle on the one week for that one week supply and a little bit more follow through for the QQQ to the downside would probably be under Friday's low. If it can break that, that could take you down to 372.85 and maybe wait for a slow stochastic crossover as well. Either way, I mean, it's technically now back in the uptrend, right? You have your 9 and 21 combo. So it's definitely a little bit risky to short up here. There's just no clear direction for me on this one this week or really the SPX either. You know, the move already happened. Uh, the last two weeks, it gave two perfect opportunities to buy the dip and then buy the dip again the next week after that. So I would just be careful on this one. Maybe just expect 372.85 is the maximum low if we see downside. And that's about it. You can maybe look at calls if it pulled back down here as well. So if it came back down to 372.85 and tried to help, you know, hold up there, that'd be a great back test trade. And you could look at calls there. Otherwise, you know, if it can pull back into the moving averages again, that's another good area to look at calls maybe. But to buy the dip, I would rather buy the dips. I don't like buying into supply and I don't like buying breakouts really that much. It depends how big the level is. Like you got a pretty clear breakout right here. They gave a nice breakout to the upside for a couple days, but we kind of already missed that right here, right? This is a breakout. So this big bar did break out for two days straight. Once it got over that supply, or the sell and balance high. There's really no breakout trade right now. You wouldn't have a breakout trade on QQQ here until it got over, you know, 385 and also about 388 or so. That'd be your breakout. So I hope that makes sense. I hope you can see it's really not that clear here. Wait for the pullback. Wait for it to get into, you know, 370s, maybe 373 or so, the moving averages, and you could try to buy the dip uh, for a higher low trade or a back test. But otherwise, I really wouldn't touch it up here. All right, next we're going into the IWM. And last week we were looking for 189. I pretty much just reiterated my 189 price target that didn't hit the week before because banks were pretty slow and the financial sector was slow. So this little chop zone was the week prior. We we're looking for the shoulder, the second shoulder to get made. So this is the first shoulder, potential head, 
We're looking for a second shoulder to get made here. Uh, it hasn't been made yet, and there's still a chance it could, but obviously you need to go back under the 189s and just make that shoulder. In order to make a head and shoulders, you know, it'd have to break the neckline as well, and then it would confirm. Just like I showed you in RCL, has to break the neckline. So that was just our little speculation, is that it would, it would bounce off this demand. We had a clear lower shadow buyer's wick here from last Friday. Really nice wick push up to the upside. This means that buyer stepped in, they pushed it up all the way into the end of the session. And that gave a really good signal for a good reaction to our demand zone. And I was looking for a bounce up to 189. I just didn't put a timeline on it and it did hit, you know, within three days. So if you just keep your expectations low, don't expect too much from the market, it will surprise you. And last week it did surprise me because all my price targets on the indexes hit, you know, within two or three days. So if you just expect the market to be slow, expect it to be, you know, not give you what you want, it'll surprise you sometimes and it'll feel that much better and you won't be disappointed if it goes wrong as well, like I said earlier. So now that we pretty much cleared my price target, we need to look at something new here. As long as it stays over this 189.24, I feel pretty, you know, relatively bullish on it. There's really no clear direction here yet. The best trade was off one day demand. You already got that. Now we're kind of at this little supply zone right here it's a little classic drop base drop zone so you got a drop base drop pretty heavy sale and balance right here so i need to get over the 192s that's the supply zone high if we can get over that that'll take you to you know back to 196 which is your supply zone from february 2023 that we rejected off over here so that's what you're looking at right now it needs to stay over 189.24 previous resistance if it can make that as new support then break over 192 it could take you up to 196s so this looks a little bit more clear than you know spx and qqq i feel like the levels are a little bit more clear spx and qqq are a little bit a little bit sketchier honestly to me with iwm here you have a clear you know 189.24 structure if that holds you can go higher if that breaks you can go lower so your 189.24 is kind of your line in the sand and then you also have the supply in the way. So if you're bearish and you want to you know, take puts on IWM, you do have the supply with you. You have that in your favor, but you don't want to wait for 189.24 to get taken out and close under that. And then this would fill back up, go down, maybe make a shoulder. Otherwise, you're going to you're gonna want to wait for you know, 192 to get broken over. And that's a pretty clear shot up to the 196s. So IWM is the waiting game, but there's a little bit more clear of a plan here. I hope that makes sense. You're either waiting for a supply high to get taken out or you're waiting for 189.24 to get broken down uh, for downside so this can go either way just wait for a signal as we're inside supply you want to wait for the high to get taken out and likewise you don't want to take any puts here yet until it takes out 189.24 so as for iwm just wait make sure you draw your supply also mark your 189.24 and just wait for one of those to break and that will give you a trade all right next we're going into the vix which did Everything I expected it to actually went a bit, a little bit lower than I expected, uh, much faster than expected. So last Friday, we closed directly at the 1550s. I mentioned we needed to get under the 1550s in order to see the market go higher and also see volatility start falling. So we got our first close on Monday directly below 1553. That took you to your 2021 low that we cover every week, the 1473 and the 1410s. You can see Tuesday, it closed below the 2021 low. Once it closed under that, it closed under the next 2021 low on Wednesday, right here. Once it closed under that, it was just a stray shot to 12.73. So you do have closes under each of the levels every single day, starting from Monday. So you got to close under the 1550s Monday, close under the first 2021 low Tuesday, close under the second 2021 low Wednesday. And that was your final, final zone to close under in order to take you to 12.73 lows. And we're starting to get there. We're at 1382. Actually, we're much lower than that. So trading view is wrong here. This is not up 5.66%. It's actually close at about the 310s or the 1310s. Very, very low. Very close to 1270s, which is your double bottom support right here. So this is where the market starts getting a little bit tricky. You got really low volatility. It makes it much harder to short, but it also makes puts cheaper. So you have to decide. Do you want to get cheap hedges? And if the answer is yes, you usually want to start small when volatility is this low because there's still upside risk, especially when the VIX is this low. And we got down there really fast. So we went from 15s to lower 13s within a week, which is 
pretty big drop. So this will kind of go hand in hand with our SPX analysis. If you really wanted to trade the SPX or swing, you want to see signals from the VIX. If you want to take puts at the supply that we we're looking at, the one week supply zone, you need to see 1273 holding a support. You need to see like a clear candle, like one like this. And you also would need to start reclaiming the 2021 lows as well. So that's where it gets tough if you want to short because you are going against volatility, which is screaming much lower. But this 1273, huge level, this can likely hold up. Even this general area, this 13 to 1273 can definitely hold up. And volatility, you know, could shoot back up to the 14s, which is your 2021 lows. Market can't go any higher, really. Well, it can, but it likely won't go any higher until it breaks under the 1273. Under the 1273 be huge. That means you're breaking VIX lows that we haven't seen in years, just like we did back here. And then we made that solid base at 1273. So you can imagine if 1273 gets broke, that would likely, you know, take the SPX much higher. We could probably start seeing the 52 week highs on SPX, you know, the top wicks start, you know, starting to get tested. So with 1273 coming up, I definitely wouldn't buy calls yet. Because if it starts holding up here, the market's just going to, you know, rug pull you. If it starts holding up at 12.73 and the algos pick up on 12.73 and they start picking up puts, the VIX starts getting bid back up, you're definitely going to wish you didn't buy calls because very, very low. So what you'll want to do is wait for 12.73 to get taken out. If 12.73 starts getting taken out, then you can start looking at, you know, calls on SPX maybe or, the, you know, the SPY or the S&P with a little bit more confidence because you're starting to break that low. If you get under that low... It's a pretty good signal. And, you know, if you have other things falling through, like the, you know, dollar going lower, which hasn't followed the VIX at all, it actually has done the opposite. That would be good as well. You want to see the dollar and the VIX both going lower for the market to go higher. It's just good. Uh, maybe even yields as well. You want to see, you know, the tenure going down as well. So this 1273 is obviously the level of focus this week. And then just above it is just, you know, 1410. And that's where that's what we're between right now. So you just want to wait for that to get taken down to be bullish on the market. You want to see a break first. Or you want to see it hold up. And likely it's going to try to hold up. I don't think it's just going to bust right through. It's probably going to try to hold up on the shorter term time frames. The question is, will it, you know, follow through though? And that's what you have to kind of figure out once it happens. So we'll have to wait till, till it gets to the 1273. You can probably just watch 13 flat as well. So just draw, you know, 13 flat to 1273 and just watch the area. If it starts holding up, that's a pretty good sign that, you know, maybe the VIX is not going to give up yet. But I just personally, I would be careful. You know, just don't jump into anything yet. Either wait for the 1273 to get taken out to be a little bit more bullish on the market or wait for, you know, a signal that it's starting to hold up. So that's my opinion this week. Obviously not as clear cut as it was last week. And that's for a reason. I showed you why. I mean, the SPX is at supply. It's mid-range as well. There's really no good signal on it. Same with the QQQ. VIX starting to approach lows. Coming up to a big level, a big, you know, indecision area, big inflection point. You want to wait. You want to see what it does at this area first before making any decisions. So 1273 in focus, really big level. Either want to see it breaking or holding up here. All right, and last but not least, going into... The DXY. So I think last week I mentioned towards the end of the video, my final thoughts on DXY I was just looking for a little pullback into 103.50s and it probably tried to hold up there. It actually broke under that, but held up at our 2020 COVID peak at 103 flat that we cover literally basically every week. Your most important point, and I've explained why it's your most important point a bunch of times. But either way, you can see why it's important. Uh, the last couple of weeks, last month, 103 held up here, 103 held up again right here absolutely ripped off of it so if you've been paying attention to the dxy you would have known for a fact that 103 was a huge support and there's a good chance it could hold up and bid back up and that probably wouldn't be good for the markets at least for equities if you didn't know the dxy and equities usually have an inverse correlation so if the dollar goes up market's going to go lower and vice versa but it just depends as you can see friday you know it's up 0.6 percent and market, you know, closed up flat 0.2. It actually wasn't even down that bad. It did sell off from the non-farm payrolls data. So, so this little drop right here is probably what caused the DXY spike. But then it held up structure really well. And VIX really didn't do anything. So it could have gone a lot worse. You know what I mean? The DXY being up 0.6%, anywhere from half a percent to 0.75 is huge for the dollar. And that usually brings big volatility into equities. But it really wasn't that bad on Friday considering how strong the dollar closed. So we're actually in the same spot that we were last week when we were looking at this. So here's where we were on Friday. We closed here, literally the same exact spot. So we closed at 104.20s or so. 
we're at 104.16. So we're at the same spot, just kind of a different structure. Uh, we have clear, clear bullish momentum off 103. And these last two days right here from the data, they kind of give us that boost. But either way, we still have this 104.40s as a new area of resistance. And we also have 104.60s. So if we do base out here, maximum I could see it, you know, is, you know, 104.60s. And then probably try to reject about there. If the dollar does shoot up here and run up into there, obviously that can bring the market down. But this is a pretty big area of resistance. So I can't really expect too much. Everything's at an inflection point right now. You got VIX coming up to lows. You got DXY at major resistance. It's just an inflection point for the market. You got the indexes at supply. It might be just wise to just wait for swing trades. Wait for a signal. Something a little bit more clear. Like this was a good rejection. Very clear rejection that the dollar is going to go lower. Something like that. Or like a nice bullish candle, right? Off this 103. This is a nice signal that it could go higher. Look for something like that. These little dookie bars right here. These little small pip squeaks. Not really going to give you much. So you need to see those one day bars. A little bit more full. A little bit more clear signals right and we need to see that you know to make kind of make a decision here but either way we know for a fact 10440s to 10470s big resistance could reject about there with your max point being up at 10470s which comes from over here so like i said everything's at an inflection point i showed you every single inflection point vix 1270s low you got dxy at the 104s big resistance indexes at supply at resistance so you got to be careful and you want to wait for a signal. And not only that, we have a very quiet week in terms of data. So we might not see much currency volatility this week. Another reason why we could just see a base out here, kind of consolidate. Like I said, the uh, ISM services and the services PMIs that can move us, that could, you know, bring some currency volatility. But otherwise, very quiet week. And it's also a shortened week. So just trade safe, you know, don't force anything. Once we start getting into October, market starts getting a little bit better historically you know with october coming up you could be looking for some discounts for your long-term portfolio and you can see we do average a great rally once october starts coming so august september very slow guys usually and sometimes it can be very volatile because of the thin trading low bids and offers it takes less to move the market and that brings wild swings just another reason to you know be careful but either way final thoughts on dollar maximum i could see it you know one of four seventies i would try to reject about there but I also kind of expect it maybe to, you know, reject at the 10440s as well. Just this general area of 104s, you know, it can reject anywhere. It doesn't have to be exactly on point. I would just view this 104s as, you know, potential area it can reject. And that'd be good for the market. You know, market could start breaking through the supply. And also that would take, you know, maybe that'd take the VIX lower and break the 1270s as well. But I want to see VIX break in the 1270s. I want to see DXY rejecting here. And I feel really good about market going higher. So this week, I'm definitely going to be looking at, you know, more of the extra indicators and not just, you know, paying attention to levels but paying attention to everything because we are at an inflection point on multiple things. So that's the video, guys. Hope you guys enjoyed. Make sure you like, comment and subscribe to our extra YouTube channel. I'm going to get this chopped up, edited and sent out. I love you guys and I'm out.